Hello and welcome to another Knitting Pod. I am Lena and I'm so glad that you're taking a little time out of your precious day to hang out with me. It is actually Valentine's Day today, so a perfect day to celebrate our favorite thing in the whole universe, which is knitting, of course. So whether you're new or returning, I'm really, really glad you're here. Um, today I am wrapped in my beautiful painting Bricks Shawl by the one and only Stephen West. I'm going to show it to you in case you have never seen me wear it because it's really gorgeous in all its glory because it is unabashedly rainbow, you guys. Sometimes we try to be sophisticated and other times we lean into our eight-year-old selves and our love for sparkly rainbows and unicorns. And that is exactly what I did. Um, it has this fun chevron border. I used all sorts of different scraps and it was a fantastic knit. I highly recommend the painting series generally. He's got painting rainbows, painting honeycombs, painting bricks, painting waves, all sorts of painting to be done with Stephen. Um, blankets, shawls, sweaters, hats, everything. Mittens, socks. Um, I love it because it's just, it's a very simple technique, but it looks so beautiful. You're only working with one color at a time. It is not color work. It is a lot of slip stitches and I really love it. Um, on my head is the Wide Rib Hat by Pearl Soho. It is a free pattern. This is my son's, I stole it. It has, as you can see, the name is for these wide ribs. And then you have a stockinette body, which I think makes it just fly off the needles. This is a worsted weight yarn, Malabrigo Rios. And I love this hat. It is one of the only hats, I've said this a million times, because I've worn this before, that really is the right tightness on my head. But then, of course, I'm such a Goldilocks that I feel like I wish the body of the head were a little more boxy rather than pointy, but, you know, whatever. I, I love it. And in full disclosure, I am wearing it because the gift of aging is wisdom and joy and happiness and also gray hairs at the temple. And when you have black hair, it's just the worst. So... I'm going to tell you the whole truth because you can't see them, but they're there. And I really need to dye the grays out of my temple. And I know I don't have to, but it drives me bonker balls because, again, I have black hair. It is tinsel. This is the only time I'm like, I wish I had lighter hair because it would blend. But that is a story for another day. Okay, let's talk about knitting. First project. I have a lot to share with you, even though... I, um, actually let's fit, let's do an FO first, a finished object, even though I don't know that I feel like it's completely finished and it's, it's got dog fur on it, which is just glorious, but this is the hand stolen sweater by Petite Knit that I made for my darling husband. I think it's, this is the front. Um, it is all wrinkled because... I had it kind of crinkled up over there. It is just the most giant, boring thing you've ever seen, but it is done. Now, I am not like throwing myself a parade for finishing this very long-term project because I'm still not convinced that the sleeves are both the same exact length. Um, I feel like one is just a hair shorter than the other, and I am also positive that no one on the planet would know, but it's going to bother me. So my husband is not in town right now, but when he gets back, I'm going to really try to figure out if that's true and possibly rip one back or add, I don't know. One thing I did with this sweater from a live and learn perspective is I blocked it before doing the sleeve ribbing because I didn't know how much this particular yarn would grow. Um, even though this is a non-superwash, this is a uh, Sandness Garn Double Sunday, I think. It's a non-superwash yarn, which I really, really like because it's 
non-superwash, but it's not itchy at all. It's a very comfortable, sometimes I think non-superwash can be a little woolier and therefore itchier. Anyway, thank goodness I did that because of course the sleeves grew. So I had stopped where I thought there would be, I would be able to do about two inches, an inch and a half of ribbing and it grew that exact amount. So it was hitting him right where um, it sh the sleeves should have ended. And he is a very tall, long-armed person, which is super fun when you're making sleeves, but it, um, it was just the right length. So he was, you know, he was just like, what did he say? It was hilarious. Um, I don't remember what he said. Instead of bind off, he used a term that cracked me up. But I couldn't just bind off there because it's stuck in that and it would have rolled and it would have been fine for me, but on him, I wouldn't want that. So I ripped back two rows and I just did like a garter edge border and bound off. And I know that that wouldn't work for a lot of perfectionists out there, but it works just fine for me. Um, he definitely didn't care. And then when he tried it on, it fit beautifully. Like I said, it's just that sleeve. That's why I haven't woven in the ends there. The sleeves, I'm just, I need to confirm when he gets back. So I feel like, I don't feel that glow of finishing a project that you've been keen on wrapping up yet because it still does feel sort of like a tentative finish as far as the plainest sweater goes it was a fine knit the directions were perfectly you know clear and knittable but it was, was not the most fun knit. So from now on, I feel like I've checked the sweater box for at least a few years and maybe just hats for him. I know I would love to knit him socks, but he has weird foot issues and has to wear, wear these strange finger toe sock thingies. But anyway, I'm sure he really appreciates me sharing his foot problems with you. Okay, so that is the finished object for now. It is still sitting out for some reason I need to put it away because it's it is just hanging around next up another practical knit oh dear I've got wool stitches falling off here this is the Callias cardigan by Isabel Kramer it is um, coming along, sorry, it's been jammed in this bag. You would think I would be more prepared, but alas, I am not. Um, it is a very wearable cardigan, which is code for not terribly exciting to knit. Um, I have been good about picking it up. Do I feel like a glow with knitting joy when I'm knitting on this? I do not, but I know it'll be something I really enjoy wearing. So like for instance, when my son had basketball games this weekend, I took this because it's very easy to just sneak in a couple of rows mindlessly because I'm just in the body of the sweater. I talked about this last time, so I might not you know, revisit it in depth, but it has a slip stitch ribbing back, a built-in slip stitch ribbing collar, and then a stockinette body. Um, I meant to look this up, but one of you, because what I was saying last time is I found the wrong side rows a bit more challenging than the right side rows because I have found that Norwegian pearls are just a lifesaver for me, and especially in one-by-one one ribbing, but I hadn't figured out how to do a Norwegian slip, and one of you, I really wish I could remember. If I, if I can find it, I'll put your name in, in the video because it was truly life-changing for me. You told me how to do a Norwegian slip, I guess it would be called, 
And it was so obvious in retrospect that that was possible. It just didn't click in my brain. And so I just am eternally grateful for that tip because it makes the wrong side rows so much more doable when I'm not bringing that yarn back and forth to slip. So yay for us and helping each other along. This is Julie Asselin in their Nurtured Base, which is a worsted weight, woolen spun, non-superwash yarn. You know, again, it's because I had to drop two needle sizes from her recommended to find get to get gauge, and even then my row gauge was just woefully off. Um, it makes for a tighter fit between needle and yarn, so there's just not that like pleasant slide off the needles feeling that you want. So again, this is a more of a finished object that I want than a um, like a, a piece that I'm like dying to pick up and knit on. Um, and it's one of those things, you know, when you're not feeling like the vibes of your knit, I keep thinking I've gotten more done than I have. So then I'll go try it on, which is my favorite thing about a top-down thing. And it just is like, I feel like I'm barely making any progress. But I think the key to that is just not rushing it. It doesn't need to be done soon, but it does need to be done because this yarn has, has been haunting me for like two years and I refuse to keep it unknit any longer. Okay. I'm running out of couch room for all the things I want to show you. What else? Okay, now this has been a much more joyful knit for me. Uh-oh, I'm all tangled up. This is, I mean, when I show you, haven't made much progress since last week, actually. This is the Bubbles and Bria shawl by Stephen West, of course. Who else could come up with something with, you know, such a riot of fun. Um, every time I pick this up, I am just so excited. It's so much fun, and I love watching the colors come together. I am on the, let's see, sixth stripe of eight in this bubble pattern before I switch to this brioche pattern again. The bubble pattern is just so gorgeous, and easy and fun to watch unfold. Of course, as the rows get longer, those long pearl rows are long pearl rows. Um, always fun, but um, it's just, it is a joy. Every time I get to pick this up, it's a joy. Also, I talked about Carson Deemers last week, but just the size difference between this yarn and the Calias cardigan, um, it's just a really nice break for my hands. And this yarn, because it's fingering weight, and I think I'm using 3.5, I did not swatch, yeah, the, uh, size four, 3.5 millimeter, it just slips right off the needle, so it's like I can just really not struggle against the yarn. Um, my friend Michelle, is she cast the same thing on and she messaged me the other day that, her stitch count was completely off, and I was thinking to myself how, you know, what, what happened is she forgot. She didn't read super carefully, and the first row of something, you have to do a make one every, like, so many stitches to increase. There's, like, a big increase row where you increase lots of stitches, and she forgot. And I was thinking how whenever a piece is simpler we tend to make more mistakes because we tend to assume we know what the directions are. Does that make any sense? Like she made the mistake in this really simple garter stitch because I'm sure she was like, oh, it's just garter. I'm going to keep increasing as I do. And it's just such a bummer when that happens. However, the thing I love about shawls, when you make a mistake like that, you can really easily fudge it um, and add increases in a different place because this is not like something that has to fit perfectly through the yoke and all that kind of jazz. Also, I apologize for the snoring. It is my dog. It is her birthday today. She's a Valentine's Day baby. So I don't have the heart to move her because she's so happily sleeping on her little bed. So 
apologies for the birthday girl's grumblings in her sleep. Um, what else? Um, almost done with this section. I have enjoyed not following the same color sequence as this first part because it just keeps it more fun and I really enjoy picking the next color. Like I enjoy um, thinking about what color will suit best that follows and without have like repeating anything here as much as I can. So I've just enjoyed that whole, that whole process. And right here, this, you know, grayish, grayish color and the maroon and the baby pink. I just, I love it. It's very seventies right here. And I really just love it. I'm telling you the, the feeling of various knits, this is why I love to have multiple projects going because the feeling you want, like, do you want to be uplifted? That's when I pick up this project. Like if I feel down the color and working with the colors, just, I love it. And then if I am just trying to, you know, get stuff done and be out in the world, then I'm not going to take something that I have to lug around multiple colors of yarn. So that is the Bubbles and Brio shawl. Now I saved my most favorite current knit for last because I'm so obsessed with this and I have not been able to put it down. Um, it is the Moonflower Collar by Sari Nordland that I showed you last week. And I told you how much I had struggled with the cable charts and the tiny difference in starting with the wrong side row and all the silly mistakes I made. And also just um, hadn't read a cable chart in a while. And it was just, it took a lot of mental focus and resilience because I had to cast it on over and over and rip it out over and over. But you guys look at that. It's seriously, this is just giving me so much joy. I just, I cannot even tell you. Everything about this has been just, you know, I don't know, just, um, you know, ringing my bell, so to speak. Like, I, I'm, I'm stumbling over my words because I don't quite know how to even start explaining how much I love this piece. First of all, the yarn and the pattern go together so perfectly because this is, again, I told you last week, Hedgehog, hedgehog Fibers Tweety in the original colorway, which I fell in love with because there's just nothing I love more than a very, you know, classic gray with these pops of recycled fiber that are spun into the yarn. It's just so cool. You can really see a lot too on the back if you want to see the back. Um, I was bummed because I had a lot of extra of this yarn, but I was hesitant to make a top because it is an itchy yarn. I really find it to be itchy, but the fact that this is a collar and it'll never be really against my skin, there will always be a layer, like a sweater or a sweatshirt or something. It just fits this pattern and everything just so perfectly. And the fact that you get to use something in your stash for the appropriate project. It's just like a 10 out of 10, you guys. Um, and then what is more beautiful than the classic cables with a Tweety yarn? It's just, it is so much fun. And this pattern has made me realize a few things. Number one is not to shy away from challenging projects. Um, I found so much, I don't know, satisfaction. That is the word. I have found a lot of satisfaction in struggling a lot at the beginning and then finding 
a really nice rhythm and being able to you know not have to just work on this project in silence i can actually keep have a podcast or a book in my ears because now it just feels like second nature to read the charts so i really feel like this was the perfect transitional you know baby cabler to more ambitious cabler and as I said last week, I had ripped out a cabled sweater that was just the same cables over and over, and it was just killing me with boredom. This is just not like that at all. And so now I know what to look for in other cabled patterns. You know, you can see very clearly how much variety in the cabling there is. One of the things that I just think is so darling are these faux cables, which is actually done by slipping of the third stitch over the two and then yarning over and it gives it such a unique look i love when you see horizontal bands of yarn because it looks like beautifully cinched almost like smocking do y'all remember smocking anyway i love it it's so gorgeous and watching the cables unfold especially that center one it's just a satisfaction only a knitter's heart knows and I am obsessed I am at the bottom where it's just one by one ribbing which I think ends it in such a classic note and then uh, you pick up where these markers are and you start the front panel so you start the left then you put those stitches on hold do the right and then you join it um, it's a very simple front. I believe it's there is no center panel, so the back should be really simple. I mean, the front should be really simple, and then you have a you pick up for a turtleneck collar, which I have never knit because I'm not much of a turtleneck gal because I find it claustrophobic and itchy often. But because this is a collar. If you are inside, you know, at dinner and you wore it, you can easily just pop it off and throw it in your bag, which is why I'm really obsessed with this. This, uh, this pattern has lived up to my hopes and dreams very, very well. Like I said, that when that beautiful magic of the right yarn and the right pattern and the right stimulation level all collide, it's just, it is magical. So this is hands down my favorite knit of the year so far, and I cannot wait to dive down the cable rabbit hole further. If Please send me your favorite cabled sweaters, okay? I know the two, the two designers that I know are most known for their cables are Thea Coleman and Sari Nordland, and I'm sure there's others, so please, please send them my way if you have any suggestions. Um, and the thing about both of them is they're incredibly prolific. They have so many patterns in their libraries. It's incredible. And often, of course, it's like, you know, she has a moonflower collar and a moonflower hat and a moonflower pullover and a moonflower cardigan, which I think is wonderful because if you're more of a cardigan person rather than a sweater person, you know, there's something for everybody. Or if you just want to dip your toe in and see if you like something, it's nice to start with a smaller project like this rather than jumping into something that's going to take you months because cables are more time consuming. You are, whether you are cabling with or without a needle, it is obviously slower to have to change the order of stitches. I think one of the things that just blows my mind about knitting across the board is how many different looks you can get from such a simple art of knits and pearls and all knits, pearls and slips. And you just have a universe of beauty and the look of this just simple act of reversing the order of a certain number of stitches is just it is incredible i cannot wait to wet block this because once all the cables relax and the background fiber relaxes it's going to look so much prettier um so i told you i was going to go on and on about my love for this 
I actually also really like the size. It fits really well, meaning the width of this piece fits the width of my personal back really well. So I'm very happy with it. I cannot stop, can't stop, won't stop. Um, we're going to Portland on Friday morning and I decided now that I'm in a really good place with this, like I will finish the bottom today and um, be able to pick up the front panel. I think it'll be a great travel project because it's small and the front is so easy. Like I can totally, I don't have to be so hyper-focused that I can't pay attention to my child. Um, so yeah, definitely taking this piece on either, probably the plane, let's be honest, because you never know what happens. So maybe by next week I will be done with this. I doubt it, honestly, because I've got a lot going on, but I hope to make a lot of progress on the front. Maybe I won't have picked up for the collar yet though, but that'll be real quick because it's just ribbing. All right, you. so here's a little ball. Oh, by the way, <laughs> picking up this ball of yarn reminded me I was trying to wind the rest of those skeins on my Swift and Winder or whatever it's called. I was about to lose my mind. My Swift is amazing, but my ball winder is... I would like to use more colorful language, but I will refuse, I will refrain rather from letting the obscenities fly because first of all, I'm already getting triggered because it was just such a hot mess. Like I have, I think I wound both skeins finally because I was like, I don't even want to deal with this again. But thankfully it was like a yarn that I wasn't super attached to because I was having to, it kept getting caught and it was just a disaster. I don't know what is happening. This is my second set. So I made the mistake the first time I bought, bought a Swift and ball winder, I bought a cheaper one off Amazon and it was, it just was destroyed so quickly, did not hold up. And so I spent a lot more thinking I was investing in a, uh, you know, equipment that would last forever. And this ball winder is, I would like to run over it with my car. Um, the Swift is great, but the winder is horrid and deserves punishment. And if you have a winder that actually has withstood use and time, please tell me. The third time's got to be a charm. I just, I hate this thing so much. I was, my son was just cracking up because I was just irate when I was winding this. And then I literally wound half the ball by hand until my husband walked in and he was like, don't be ridiculous, and wound it with patience and really slowly for the rest of the yarn. So that's a good man right there. Okay, that was a little aside about my rage for the week. Um, what else? I believe that's all. I'm looking around like suddenly yarn is going to, projects are gonna appear. But that is all I've been knitting, although I feel like it's a lot. Um, now, I told you last week I'm going to Portland on Friday and I really appreciate all your very generous recommendations on stuff in Portland. I really, really, really appreciate it. And if you have anything else, please do send it my way, whether in the comments below or on Instagram, you can always message me. I'm really not on Instagram very much, but I do check it once in a while. Um, I'm so excited because it's just my daughter and I and my son will be staying with his team for his basketball games and there will be no guilt in going to every yarn store we want because it's just the two of us and she will love doing that too. So I'm really, really excited. Um, one of you said there was a store called The Naughty Lamb, which is such a cute, cute name. But it is a little further. It's like 45 minutes away from the hotel we're staying at, staying at in downtown Portland. But it's 
they have spin cycle. So I'm really, really hopeful one of the closer ones has spin cycle also because I just want to experience seeing a wall of spin cycle in person rather than picking skeins um, online because spin cycle varies so much and it's just such a unique hand spun look um you know i've been on a yarn buying hiatus but all bets are off for you know yarn tourism so i will be purchasing yarn this weekend i'm very excited because my birthday is at the end of march and i like to make myself a birthday piece and I would love for it to be even more special by finding yarn for said sweater or cardigan or shawl in Portland because it just, it would be special. Um, right now, I am thinking that my birthday piece will be the pressed flowers cardigan. I just have always loved that piece. It's so so beautiful. It's oversized. I love the pressed flowers motif. It's so unique. Um, I feel like it could be both neutral and funky by like using a very neutral background and then the funkiness of the spin cycle. I just am really, really thinking that would be fun. Oh my God, the snoring is so loud. I'm so sorry. Um, she's tired and that's because I took her for a birthday run at in a field by you know she was off leash so i think she's extra tired and therefore extra loud to be frank anyway what were we talking about oh birthday cardigan um that would be the third cardigan though which is fine i love cardigans um more <clears throat> than i love sweaters i think because i tend to run hot and cold and I think I like to be able to layer. So a cardigan is wonderful, but I'm working on the heirloom quilt cardigan, the Kalias cardigan, and then that would be the third cardigan I'm working on, but whatever, we'll see. The other piece that I really was drawn to was the Traveler hoodie by Andrea Mowry. Um, I was drawn to that because I made the Traveler shawl, as you guys saw, a few weeks ago and I loved the pattern and I loved using spin cycle and I thought a spin cycle traveler hoodie would be so cool um, in spin cycle and the only time I would be able to do that guilt-free would be um, for my birthday because that would be like nine skeins or something insane of spin cycle it'd be the most expensive hoodie in the room, in every room, it it made its appearance. So we'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, but if your birthday's not an excuse to buy expensive yarn, then what are we doing here, really? Um, so yeah. Um, I think that is all. The oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I almost forgot a really important thing. I'm looking here because I have my notes. I, it's just been a week. So... Yes, here's what I wanted to talk about. It's been a week, so I haven't, I'm not as organized. I'm very scattered today. But um, anyway, I couldn't decide. And the amount of time I've spent thinking about this is slightly embarrassing because these are the types of things your knitters obsess over. But I couldn't decide whether to take, as a travel project, socks or a hat. As you guys heard last week, I really wanted to try socks again and see if I can get them to fit better and see if I can become a card carrying member of the Sock Knitters Club, because I'm most certainly not. Um, I think I said this last week, but someone said, you know, hand knit socks definitely wear differently than store bought socks. And I was very happy to hear that because then the aspiration is different. Like you can aspire to have a nicely fitting hand knit sock, but then you don't have to be disappointed when it doesn't fit like a regular sock. But I've just heard so many sock knitters say, there's nothing better than a pair of hand knit socks. Like they're so comfortable. And I feel guilty that I don't feel that way. Um, I think 
probably because the pair I made, the one and only pair I made, did not fit perfectly. Um, and I have these socks that are 100% alpaca. I'm, they're not 100% alpaca. I'm sure there's some sort of acrylic in them, but we bought them in the mountains and they are so incredibly thick and comfortable. So it's hard to compete with that in the, like when it's really cold here and I'm wearing socks in the house, it's hard to compete with that. Um, however, there are some socks out there that are so cute. Summer Lee, a lot of you have suggested her patterns to me and they, rightly so, they are just incredibly cute. I feel like my hair is scratching the microphone. Um, anyway, so the choice was between socks and a hat and I just could not, you know, decide. And so I was talking to my kiddos about it this morning and explaining that I love wearing hats in the winter because they double as hair cover, right? Like it's warm and it covers those blasted gray roots at my temple, the little baby ones that are growing in. So it's just like a win-win and it's so, like I get to enjoy the hat every time I look in the mirror. Whereas I just feel like socks don't have that, that vibe. Do you know what I mean? I know that sounds very silly, but I wore my pink Robin beanie last weekend. Um, and I knit that with like this neon pink with a strand of mohair. And every time I look in the mirror, I just get a thrill in my heart because it's like, this neon pink halo and I just it gives me so much happiness and so I think I'm leaning towards hat and it also you know is just a triple win because I can continue my obsession with cables and the particular hat I think I've settled on is a free pattern and third, I have a match, which I need to go get because I want to show you, between like the yarn and I have the perfect leftover mohair and the perfect yarn. Let me go, I'm going to pause and I'm going to grab it because it might take me a second to find it. Um, so hold, please. Okay, I'm back. I wanted to make it in, I have two and a half skeins, maybe a little bit more in this leftover from my sweet husband's sweater. And I love this colorway. I hope it doesn't appear boring to you. I mean, it can appear to as whatever, but it's, I don't know if it reads on screen as piney as it is. It's not piney, no. Cause when I think of piney, I think of a blue tinged green. This is like a, much more yellow tinged I want to say army but I can't think of the right word it's very warm and I love it and I don't have anything like it and I think it would look really pretty against my face and be a nice neutral because sometimes you want a hot pink halo and sometimes you don't and then I had this gorgeous leftover dark mustard mohair from Knitting for Olive. And I just think these would be so gorgeous together because you would get mostly this hunter green. We're going to keep trying different green names. Danny, come here. I'm thinking if she comes here, she won't snore. Hi. Um, I think that this would be just so perfect together because... Mostly it will read the green and then it'll have this golden mustardy halo. Um, I just really want to knit this. I wanted to show you what it might, what it would look like. Whoops. Okay. So you can see it'll be like a slightly marled effect, but I don't know. It's just, it's ringing my bell y'all. So I think I'm going to do this. And the pattern is the magnificent Sari Nordland because I am so obsessed with her right now. I'm going through a Sari Nordland phase. Um, she had, I was looking at her hats obsessively and the one I loved the most 
was actually free when you subscribe to this dyer's website um annabelle williams i believe she is a dyer in the uk sorry um designed that hat for this specific yarn of some type and if you sign up for her letter she sends you the newsletter she sends you this free pattern it's called the queen bee i think queen bee something because i thought it was so cute because yes i think the yarn is called oh no never mind the yarn is called yellow submarine but it reminds me of like the like a like a yellow vibrant honeybee yellow and i love the combination of the cables the big juicy cables and the bobbles and how it tapers like the bobbles are only at the bottom i just it has such a unique look um i just love it and i think it would be beautiful in these colors one of the things that i was hesitant about is that the cables are really big at the bottom and the bottom cables are five by five which when you're drawn to cabling without a needle you're not going to be able to cable five by five i'm not maybe you're a superhero and you can but that's a lot of you know it would be very tight when you twist it and it would be very hard to knit across um but when i looked at the chart the five by five twists are so rare in the hat i think there's only two and then those twists taper and that's how that look happens it's like five by five three by three and i think it just goes to two by two before you bind off at the top um but it's so so beautiful and like i said it is free and i know i think i've become more mindful this year in my attempt to use the yarn i have in my stash that i paid very good money for it's made me more mindful just generally how in the past i've just been like extremely you know flippant about buying patterns but patterns range, I would say, from like five to ten dollars, right? Average, usually seven dollars, and you know that adds up. And I think the mindfulness of that came kind of when I became so obsessed with Spin Cycle, which is so freaking expensive. But think about it: like, if you buy four patterns for seven dollars, you're almost to a skein of Spin Cycle. So if you can just be a slight hair more mindful about your buying of patterns, you can feel a little less guilty about buying, you know, expensive yarn when the time is right. That's kind of how I'm thinking of it. Um, and you know, when I end up purchasing a pattern that I don't end up knitting, I know it sounds so silly, but I feel guilty and you know, I, bought that pattern for a cowl the first light cowl a couple of weeks ago and i didn't like it so i didn't end up making it and every time i open my library and it's like the first pattern there i'm like i feel guilty that i wasted money on it and it's not a waste i really do think of it as supporting designers who are working so hard to give us all things to knit but i am not going to turn down a gorgeous pattern by one of my favorite designers that is also free so of course i'm happy to pay for sorry nordland's patterns because they're stunning but i am thrilled to have a free one um so yeah i think i settled on that if i had done socks i was going to do a purely just plain vanilla sock that was two strands of fingering weight held together and who knows i might just toss a little bit of that extra yarn in my bag because if I, the mood strikes somehow um you'd think i'm traveling for a month not four days but you know knitting is life so i'm sorry i'm looking at the hat patterns picture and it's distracting me with its beauty so i'm going to go ahead and shut my laptop um what else i think that's it i think that is officially all the knitting content i have um have like a sort of knitting life overlap if you want to stick around because it's really cool and special so i'm going to share that with you before i talk about completely unrelated things the other day we are not 
we're not a family that really celebrates Valentine's Day, or I should say, we're not a couple, my husband and I, that celebrates Valentine's Day. I mean, it's just, it just seems kind of silly. If you're super into Valentine's Day, rock on. I think that any day that you can make feel special, if it feels authentic to you, is amazing. But to me, it's never been something that I need. I'm just not that kind of gal. But my husband, out of the blue this last weekend, just like, hey, check your, check what I just texted you. And I'm going to insert right here what he texted me, okay? So here it goes. Hi, Lena. Happy Valentine's Day. I hope you have a really fun day with your family and all your loved ones and that you get to sneak in a little bit of knitting time too. Happy Valentine's Day. Okay. Is that not the sweetest thing you've ever seen in your whole life? Like, I don't know what possessed him, my husband, to just reach out to Stephen and ask him to do that. And then Stephen agreed and did it. And it just, it still makes my cheeks warm just thinking about it because y'all know how much I love Stephen West and how much it's like life goals to meet him um, someday. Um, but it was just, it just was the best. It was, it was the best to see like my favorite designer and to feel so, I don't know, I guess the only word is loved. It's like, because it's not like my husband is a knitter, um, but he's so just, I don't know. He's just the most delightful man. He's so thoughtful and takes my passion for knitting so seriously and it just made my whole day and I was excited to share it with you um, because it's just it was the most special thing ever. Steven is a doll and I love him and my daughter and I watched his latest vlog episode vlog I guess his video blog yesterday all about shawls and he had all these kits and it was just a delight. Every time I get to see him on video i just feel so happy because he has such a contagious effervescent joy about him so anyway that was a highlight of my weekend for sure and you know also there was another highlight was my kids both had sleepovers on saturday night a very rare 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 occasion that they're both out of the house and we are home alone and I just don't think I can tell you how lovely it was. And please don't judge me as a parent. You know if you're around and have watched me that there's nothing on this planet I take more seriously than knitting and parenting. And I adore my kids. Like they are my soulmates. I. I just, they hung the moon. I couldn't imagine anyone on this planet that I love spending time with more than those two. To the point where I have a lot of anxiety about the future when they go off and start leading their own lives. I mean, my daughter is only 10 and my son is 14, but he's starting high school in the fall. And it just feels like the next four years are going to go by in the blink of an eye as the last 14 have and it just breaks my heart every time I think of like not living in the same house as them not seeing them every day all that but it was quite the discovery to find that I had a really lovely time while they were gone <laughs> It was just, it made me think of my younger self, my 20 something self before they were even, you know, a twinkle in the sky. My husband and I have so much fun together. We have fantastic conversation. We laugh our butts off. We love to do the same things. We love 
walking and hiking and being outside, just laying around watching a show that we both love. Like it was such a glorious, like 16 hours. It was so short because of course basketball games and we didn't get home until like nine o'clock. And you know, it was a very short lived staycation for the two of us, but it just made me realize that nothing is one-sided. Nothing only has one dimension. For everything you get, you got to give something. For everything you give, you're going to get something. Everything, if you look closely enough, has many sides. And yes, I will be so sad when this phase of life is over, but there is a beautiful relationship which can get so much more attention and so much more freedom to spend time with other adults that I love. Friends, uh, like the friends I have by myself, the couple friends that we have, there'll be so much more time. Cause right now it's like the kids just take up every second of our lives, you know? And I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't, I want to look back and know that I didn't miss anything. Um, it brings me a lot of joy and peace and those memories will be everything I have at the end of the day. But I'm really, I feel like this deep seated relief to know that we will be just fine um, when they go and maybe even thrive. So that is a far off scenario, but the older I get, the faster time goes. There's just no doubt about it. So it is a real relief not to feel just filled with dread, but rather, you know, you can choose to focus on the good things that will be coming down the hatch. So that was my little thing to share with you. That was a real big realization that came from just absolute happenstance that they were both out of the house. So if you are one of those people that struggles with transitions as I am, just generally, I'm like a baby. Like I don't want, I like things to stay the same. I'm, I just like routine and I like to know what, what life is going to be like. So I got a little taste anyway. Other than that, uh, my obsession with Libby, the library app continues. It's just I am so obsessed I can't stop talking about it because it feels too good to be true that I can just get audiobooks from the library. I just, yesterday my husband left for work and I was just so, so sad. And because, I was so sad because, you know, he was gone for a month and then life got really crazy when he got back because we went on vacation and then I was so sick and he was so sick and, and like for the last few weeks, I feel like we finally have been in this normal routine where it's just normal, uneventful life. And it's been so glorious that him leaving just felt so oh, heavy and sad and miserable. And we're hoping he gets to come back maybe for next weekend, but I don't know. And I was just letting myself feel the sadness and be just upset about it because I don't believe in trying to push away those negative emotions. Like if you just feel it, you know you'll come out the other side. Whereas if you try to avoid it and distract yourself sometimes, I find that it just wants, the harder you push it down, the more it wants to come up. Like that whole analogy is so spot on about it's like trying to hold a balloon underwater and it's like wrestling it because it just wants to pop back up and it's going to win eventually. But that's beside the point. But I gave myself permission to just feel all my emotions and then I gave myself the luxury of working on my cabled collar and listening to a book. And because it was from the library, I didn't feel guilty literally binge listening to this book. And it was so perfect because it was like seven hours and it was a really well written, beautiful story. It's called the, I think it's called Best of Friends by 
Camila Shamsi, I believe. I'll put it up on the screen. I can't quite remember. It's an author I had never heard of. Randomly came across this book and it was available right away from Libby. So I downloaded it and it was just a beautiful story of two girls growing up in Pakistan who end up, so like part of it is set in Pakistan and then they move to London and the rest of it is set in London as adults, as their friendship as adults progresses and basically like something happens when they're young that really defines the rest of their lives and their friendship. And it was just such a good book. It was substantive yet binge worthy and it just kind of saved my life yesterday. It was just the perfect thing. And then once my kids got home, I felt like happy again. I felt like I had enjoyed my solitude, which is so rare since my husband does work from home and he's always around when he's around. So anyway, I'm blathering, but I love Libby. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Um, I can't wait to pick a book for the trip. I don't know what it's going to be, but I will tell you when I figure it out. Other than that, I'm really excited. We leave early Friday morning and this podcast will be in your feeds a little earlier than normal because of that trip. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely long weekend. If you are in the States, we have the President's Day holiday, which for us is a four-day weekend, and I am not complaining. I love a long weekend. Who doesn't? Um, so yeah, if you're having that long weekend, I hope it involves a lot of knitting and me time for you. If you're not, get that knitting time in regardless. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys next week. Have a lovely weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.